In the patterns of distribution of organism across the planet, we will be discussing about the niche, the role of niche in the patterns of distribution. The niche demands, uh, the demands that an organism places on its environment in terms of physical and chemical conditions, space and food supply, help to define what ecologists call its niche. So niche is, uh, if we just crudely speak, it is a role or the place of an organism in an environment or in an ecosystem. What an organism do, what sort of requirements it has with the environment and what sort of the things that it gives to the environment that is called niche of that, in, uh, that organism. Niche cover all the aspects of the basic physics and chemistry of habitat and how uh, the organism make a living. Uh, that we can say that it is occupation of an organism. And it includes the food an animal requires, but also the encompasses the way in which it acquires that food. It predates, it parasitizes that food. What, sort, uh, what is the way that it utilizes to get its food is also included in the niche. So there is the, fact, uh, the factor of niche partitioning. And niche partitioning, as the name indicates, that one niche, it is partitioned. It goes in two ways. So the subdivision of the resources is niche partitioning. Plants, for example, they have the similar requirements for the water and chemical elements from the soil. But what happens when they partition their niches? They are having same requirement. But to avoid the competition, they may have roots which go deeper than the other plants so that they can get the water from the depth and does not compete with the, with the neighboring uh, plants. Uh, root at different depths or flower at different times. So if they are flowering at the same time, there will be competition for the, uh, uh, the pollen dispersal. The, uh, for example, the bees do that job. So bees will be occupied with one type of plants. And if the other type of plants are also flowering at the same time, then bees won't have enough uh, time. And at some times, it is, uh, there are no flowers. So what do they do? To avoid competition, they are having the flowering at different times as well. So they tap slightly different resources, and therefore they differ in their niche. Although there is, uh, there is the resources are the same, but they are tapping those resources differently. And then there is the kleptoparasitism. The kleptoparasitism, for example, the example of it is a very widespread duck, which is called Gadwil, Anis trape, uh, Stepera. And then there is another waterfowl, with, uh, water organism, uh, the bird which lives on the water, that are the coots, both Eurasian coot, which is Fulica etra, and the American coot, which is Fulica americana. So uh, there is the kleptoparasitism. The, uh, you can see that this is the act of thieving, not actually uh, a parasitism, but the act of thieving or stealing from the others. The later two coots, they dive for their food and bring vegetable matter to the surface from greater depth. And now what does the gadwell do? The coots are messy eaters and it is not difficult for the gadwell to move in and collect some of the loot. So what do they do? The coots are going down, they are taking food above, they eat it, but while eating they will, you know, uh, spread some of the food because they are not very good at eating uh, uh, and not eating at a uh, very civilized manner. So some of the food will go here and there and at that time the gadwell will uh, come in and they will take those remains of the food and eat that. And this behavior is called kleptoparasitism and it is an effective way to widening the niche of the gadwell. So not only it also eats its own food but also it gets some of the benefits from the other species as well and that is widening its niche. It is increasing its impact on the environment. And there is the fundamental niche. There is a theoretical or ideal type of niche usually called the fundamental niche which is the sum of all the niche requirements under ideal condition when the species is given un unimpeded access to the resource. So it is very ideal, it doesn't happen all the time. So this is a fundamental niche of an organism in which uh, all the roles combined and 
that organism affects in uninterrupted way and eats whatever it likes so that is the fundamental niche the realized niche is the species compete for the resources have overlapping niches um, they perform better in their efficiency of acquisition so the species which uh, is in much more effectively acquiring that uh, niche that will be more successful the result is that observed distribution of organism is confined by the species interaction and these concepts are important in biogeography especially when attempts are made to model potential niches as an aid to the predicting distribution pattern so the niches are very much helpful because they tell us that what sort of resources an environment has and what sort of organism even we can predict that if a certain organism can fit into that organism just because it has an uh, a niche which it can uh, occupy in that particular environment